Ah, oh, now it's time for a profile. And the Dean Windass Hall of Fame is in association with kitbag.com this week. So get over there and buy everything. <laughs> uh, oh, it's a Premier League great we've got for you this week. One of the best goalkeepers, quite possibly, we've ever seen. It's the Great Dane, it's Peter Schmeichel. Oh, Massive yes. time. Albert! <laughs> <laughs> already, already that's a callback <laughs> um, uh, you could learn something Jim oh, uh, cheers Pete can yeah, you write no, that down for me I didn't understand what it was we don't normally do those because we're rubbish <laughs> <laughs> that might not be the Newcastle Manchester United game we'll mention though PT oh. Ooh. Mm. Ooh, oof, right in my face one in the eye um, he was born on the 18th of November 1963 oh just then 48 months before the summer of love Indeed. Uh, started his uh, playing career for his local team in Denmark. He impressed there. He got a move to Vidovre, uh, a slightly bigger club in Denmark. According to records, he scored six goals for them. <laughs> he loved coming up. He did, yeah. yeah. Last it was minute. a strange one. Um, he was there for. The balls a few on him years. as a youngster to be doing that as well. Yeah, yeah strange. <laughs> His testicle Matt esque. <laughs> <laughs> His son's done it quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. Last oh. few seasons. Well, he thinks it's normal, though. Isn't it? it's, it's different. <laughs> it's true. Um, again, he, he impressed and uh, he got a move to the Danish side at Bronby, which are one of the big sides, of course, in Denmark at the age of 24 in 1987. Uh, it was a good season, 87 88, for Schmarcher. He made his debut for Denmark. He won the league with Bronby and then went to Euro 88 with the Danes, starting against Italy and Germany, although they went out in the first round. Mm -hmm. But his uh, time at European Championships would come, though. Yeah. Uh, he went on to win the league three times with the Danish club Bromby and he helped them get to the UEFA Cup semi-final going Bromby, out that's yeah. huge isn't they it they knocked out to Roma yeah and it was yeah. only a last minute Rudy Voller goal they were drawing one all away and they would have gone through and away goals but Voller scored in the last minute he'll do that yeah mm. Voller that's true um, but yeah an incredible achievement um, and at the end of the 1990-91 season Schmalstock was quite high uh, he was voted in a poll by the IFFHS, uh, very reputable people, uh, in the top ten goalkeepers in the world. He would have been very young then as well, so that's you know, really no, a sign of things to come. Like, was he not like, like, mid late twenties by then? Um, it was kind of yeah. Because uh, don't forget, really? he, yeah, because he did, he did, he did flourish actually quite late on. Yeah, he did. He would, um, he would have been about twenty. Because I'm pretty sure he would have been like, almost thirty. Well, he was, he, he was twenty four wow. when he signed for Bromby in eighty seven. Yeah, okay. Wow. So you do the math. Yeah. Um, but Ferguson was interested mm -hmm. because I think uh, you know when Manchester United signed him in '91 for just over five hundred thousand pounds. People say, "Oh, when you look back on it, you know what a, what a great deal it was." And, and and people, I think, think he was an unknown mm -hmm. or yeah. not very well known. Whereas actually, as we said, you know, he good run in the UEFA Cup. Yeah, he'd represented Denmark at a major tournament. Um, okay, he's playing in the Danish league, league, not the best, but people what a, price a profile, though. yeah. And and do you know something? It's, it's something that I've, I'm really keen to explore in general about the price of goalkeepers. Because in this whole Moneyball thing, where they talk about, if you've read the Moneyball book about baseball, they talk about undervalued positions and stuff. Goalkeepers mm. are massively undervalued. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you get the you get the occasional massive transfer Buffon. fee for a goalkeeper. Yeah, a Buffon. Yeah. But generally speaking, <sighs> I don't Craig know, Gordon. Aside from Buffon, where do you where, where well, do you go Craig down Craig Gordon was a big one. Oh, it's nine million. De Gea, De Gea was big. De Gea, yeah. But generally speaking, compared to some like strikers I mean how many points did goalkeeper save you a season well they used Loads. to say didn't they was, yeah. Schmeichel, Schmeichel was points. incredible for that yeah yeah, yeah so uh, it was it was a great signing for Manchester half a mil and it, it, <laughs> but an even, even better one when you actually realise that he wasn't unknown it was yeah. a decent it signing it was just a really canny move exactly and his first season at United they, they won the, the League Cup and he finished the season with Denmark at Euro 92. Mm. Am, am I right in saying, um, you may not have this written down, but I'm pretty sure it took him ages to concede a goal when he signed for United. He was amazing from like day one. Is that right? I think it took him quite a few games before he actually conceded a goal at United. I think they were, they, they were genuinely really good when he signed for them. Mm. But Euro 92, uh, obviously Denmark famously qualified after, or, or stepped in for Yugoslavia. Mm. Uh, had they, kind they pulled of. out of the tournament. And the danger in the group with... England, France, and host Sweden. Kept a clean sheet against England, standard. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, lost to Sweden and beat France. Uh, and then they went through to play the defending champions, Holland, in the semi final. Holland were clear favourites yeah. uh, against Denmark. And Denmark took them to penalties. And it, the only penalty that was missed was the man who the previous tournament belonged to, Marco van Basten. And it was a great save from Schmeichel. And the Danes went through. And then Schmeichel kept a clean sheet against the Germans. In the final in in ninety two when they sensationally won the European Championships, well even they won it without Michael Laudrup as well. Yeah, mm. as as we said in in Laudrup's profile. Yeah, uh, then went uh, back to business at Manchester United where he.
he would experience more success. I think it's uh, safe to agree. Uh, more than one perhaps imagined, Pete. Uh, <laughs> five Premier League wins, three FA Cups, uh, the League Cup we just mentioned, and of course the, the Champions League. And a part <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, But what a presence he was. He that. was just big. He would save a lot with his legs. Like he'd mm. always have like that kind of teddy bear um, position where he just sort of sit down with his arms and legs yeah. outstretched, just would... on the on his backside, and nothing could get past him. Something else he was incredible for was catching shots in mid air, like, yeah, yeah. absolute screamers that he just <laughs> pluck out of the air <laughs> he, with his, his mouth. It would seem sometimes <laughs> he, just he also like a brick wall. I can remember towards the sort that of... could move. I can remember sort of towards the sort of late nineties. It might even be a bit earlier than that. It got to the point where I think I was thinking that when it comes to one on ones, he was just like the first goal you've ever seen. He was just favourite. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and absolutely. Strikers started That's to think right. that as well, and it became psychological for them. And he would just save so many ones on ones. It was yeah. it was unbelievable. Yeah. Well, uh, can you imagine being a striker? You throw on goal, and you just see him bearing that monster. Yeah. yeah. He was a wall. I, mean, I think man. we said that in Southall's profile as well, but this one even more. Mm. A red-nosed shouting wall. Constantly yeah, he's screaming at defenders. Well. <laughs> yeah, but that's it. Even his, I mean, his own defender, you wouldn't want to make a mistake, obviously, because you, you, you know, it's your job, but um, you'd piss him off. Oh, the amount of times he used to hammer Gary Neville. Yeah. <laughs> Gary Neville used to get a dog's abuse from Schmeichel. It's no. easy to forget that. It's, yeah, Schmeichel is as much you know, to do with Gary Neville's work ethic as Gary Neville is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But he, not just Neville, though. He would do it to Pallister. Oh, he's yeah, a big course, guy yeah. as well, you know. He's but brilliant. I remember Neville being the sort of young pro then. To get there <laughs> yeah. more. Mm. And could, is it fair to say that Schmeichel would have been the greatest ever goalkeeper to wear tracksuit bombs? <laughs> he used to wear tracksuit bombs quite a lot. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there's an argument. He's up there with the greatest anyway. He, uh, he was voted above like Lev Yashin at one point, wasn't he? he was, yeah. All time keepers. I mean, yeah, that and uh, that sort of, I suppose, teddy bear move or, or sort of gorilla type move, Pete, where he would just jump at an attacking player, mm. just putting his body on the line. Mm. With that, I mean, you'd think how dangerous, like, what could happen? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're uh, not giving your, your matty testicles any sort of protection, are they? No, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, people say that United haven't managed to replace Schmeichel, but there's not been a keeper in the Premier League that's been been, been as good as him. Well, do you remember the vacuum that, you know, afterwards, all, yeah, all the right. goalkeepers they went through? Yeah. The yeah. biggest testament to how good he was is how difficult United fans yeah, to replace him. Definitely. Right. It looked like Peter Cech might, you know become that uh, when he first signed for Chelsea but obviously he had his he injury was for a bit it's not, it's not quite been yeah, yeah not quite the band um, uh, he made a lot of fairly uh, poor defenders look excellent at times for Manchester mm. United and there weren't many of them but there was a couple sort of slid in every yeah. now and again it was just like oh he would he would I mean marshalled his defence mm. He really did. And if, uh, you, he if almost, you weren't in the proper position, he would flip and well he, let he, you He'd know. pick you up and drag you to where you yeah. He almost saw a bollocking as part of the save. Yeah, right, you fucking. I've done my bit of the job because yeah. you didn't do your yeah. bit, you <laughs> absolute. I didn't yeah. want to be making that save. Yeah, <laughs> but that's annoyed me. <laughs> I'm like ten Jan Mulbys taped together. <laughs> Imagine how frightening that is. Yeah. And now I'm going to have to launch the ball down the park to <laughs> yeah. set up another counter attack. Yeah. What a throw he had on him. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I mean, he would like. Oh, there's gigs on the wing. That's fine. To feet, <laughs> <laughs> he could safely, safely throw it much further yeah. than I could kick it. And probably, Easily. you know, if he threw it to feet, he might knock the player over with a sheer <laughs> yeah. force. Of it. He thought it was ten pin bowling. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Um, my goodness. Uh, oh, one save. That's what I was trying to think with the kind of uh, when he would throw his arms and legs like like weapons, like a special yeah. move. The one against Zamorano. Zamorano. Yeah, I remember that one. At yeah. Old Trafford in the quarter League, final, yeah. I think it was of the Champions yeah. League. And Zamorano is quite small anyway, so it just yeah. looked ridiculous. Well, Zamorano, <laughs> was a, I think he was a diving header from close range, and he just threw his arms up and and and, and saved it. It was incredible. But it could have been oh so different. Because after a match, have you got something about Bizarro World, Schmeichel? You're going to tell me. <laughs> well, uh, 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 after Schmuckle. a match against Liverpool in '94, when United had thrown away a three-goal lead, Ferguson had given Schmeichel a bit of a bollocking, and the big man wasn't having any of it. Schmeichel, <laughs> and he gave it right back. Like he went mental back at Ferguson, and Ferguson was just like, "You're out, mate. Sacked. See you later." You're not doing that again. It's a bollocking after a defensive error. <laughs> yeah. He just carried it into the dressing room. Yeah, right? and Ferguson, he did. That was it. That was the end of it. And I'm, I'm not sure of the timescale if, if Schmeichel did it on his way out of the dressing room or the next day at the club, whatever it was, but he apologised to the rest of the team when Ferguson wasn't there, or so he thought. Ferguson was actually could hear it and he was eavesdropping. And Schmeichel said to the whole team, look, lads, I'm really sorry. I shouldn't have acted like that. You should respect the manager. You know, what I did, that's not a good way to do things. And Ferguson heard this and reversed his decision and mm. kept Schmeichel at the club. Weak. 
<laughs> and he's paid the price. Yeah, he's yeah. paid the price. <laughs> you know, they could have had Mark Bosnich in before him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> could have had Taibi in. <laughs> Roy Carroll is a youngster. I think what actually happened was he said to Ferguson said to his assistant, I've just sacked Michael, get Taibi on the phone. <laughs> and the assistant went, Are you sure? Mm. All right, we'll let him back in. One more, one more <laughs> chance. Tybee's dropped the phone on his foot. <laughs> and yes, we do all know that Tybee wasn't actually that bad. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, I know we've mentioned this before, but one thing that Schmeichel did, I don't think I'd seen it before, was coming up for corners. Mm. Like obviously, when United uh, needed a goal, like it was outrageous behaviour. It used to it? all the time. I think it used to scare quite a lot of defenders to yeah. the point where he wouldn't score himself that much, but it used to. Which mix gives it you up an extra man because he only scored one goal. An extra for ten them. men. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's against Villa, he scored. No, no, no. The, uh, no, he scored a goal for Villa. But, oh, that's it. Of course, it was. It yeah, was yeah. Uh, a Russian side in the UEFA Cup. Oh, they, Volgograd. That's right. And they actually went out United, I think, on away goals. Mm. Um, but but he did score. Although he he scored a lovely volley against Wimbledon in the cup. Oh, it was an overhead kick, wasn't it? Kind of overhead. It, it, but he was ruled out. Of about his overhead kick as a man who is built like a statue yeah. <laughs> and do an overhead kick I think if it's a goalkeeper we can safely allow it it's no big yeah, yeah fair enough um, it's staggering and it's staggering that he didn't concede more goals like that obviously there was a famous one in Euro 96 where he got caught out by Carol Paborski but yeah. no 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 really... uh, Devil Shuka. no I'm pretty sure it was Paborski no the, with, with the I'm thinking of the scoop aren't I yeah no it was, yeah you got yeah, lobbed by him yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm, um, yeah that was when Suka they broke away and, and scored but he still got back though before yeah. it uh, but yeah I, I, uh, one display I'm sorry Pete but 95-96 season when they were chasing Newcastle an unbelievable display at St James's Park Yeah, when you had Celeste Ferdinand and the rest peppering him Yeah, and United needed that that was the turning point in the season and he was superb you know absolutely magnificent display and that is where when they say he's worth 12 points and all the rest mm, of it yeah. it's just an absolutely different class um, played for Denmark at Euro 96 um, after that season went out in the first round though um, and uh, he, he was in goal as well for the 98 World Cup where they um, got to the quarters impressively and beating Nigeria 4-0 on the way his last season was the 98-99 season when of yeah. course United won the treble it's weird to think that though mm. it was mm. all that all that time ago it's, and also the margins on that treble were like I mean they only beat Arsenal in the league by one point didn't well, they? Yeah. And they and they obviously turned that Champions League final round within a minute in injury time he saved a penalty in the FA Cup Mm. Semi as well so against well, Arsenal. We go back to Villa Park for it, Jimbo. Yeah. And, and if you think about it, you know Dennis Burkamp United down to ten men, I believe. Yeah. Um, Burkamp been sent. Oh, it's the Burkamp penalty, wasn't it? Yeah. Burkamp's got the chance to, yeah. to put the game away. Yeah. And Schmeichel saves it. It was a poor penalty, in fairness. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Nice and height for the keeper. Yeah. I mean, what a game that was! It was just unbelievable. And of course, Giggs settled it magnificently. But. Um, you know that a lot of the United players said that was the turning point for them mm. in that particular season, and of course they went on to win the League and Cup and the Champions League. And he, he, he was captain uh, in the final of the Champions League, his last game for United, because obviously Roy Keane was suspended. Um, but what a way to go out! <laughs> just absolutely incredible. Um, and after just a wonderful, wonderful stint between the sticks, at United and becoming one of the Premier League's greats, moved to play uh, for Sporting Lisbon in in Portugal, where he won the league, of course. Mm. Uh, but then he moved back to England to play for for Aston Villa and became the first keeper to score in the Premier League. Um, and then moved on to Manchester City, quite amazingly. Yeah, that was a strange one, wasn't it? Mm. City went through a, a weird sort of. Um, Almost a phase where they had like cameo goalkeepers. They had David Seaman for a bit, and they had David James oh, yeah, as well. I forgot they had David Pretty weird. <laughs> yeah. Then Schmeichel sort of moved upstairs, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. City, yeah. and, and he brought his son. Cashman came yeah. through. Yeah, yeah. It's it's weird. Like how old's Cashman now? Like uh, twenty five. Not maybe? sure, but a couple of Leicester City fans were telling me quite recently that Schmeichel's had a really good season for them. Well, mm. he's had two or three. I mean, he could, he shouldn't be playing at the level that he's playing. He shouldn't have never been playing for Notts County. But he's still young for a keeper. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's still got a lot he, of time. He, he went from City to Notts County for a pay riser, didn't he? That's yeah, 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 that yeah, exactly. thing. That's right. Yeah, yeah. But like, but like that bicycle kick that uh, his son Casper. Uh, oh, um, over the yeah. bar. Yeah, just over the bar. Yeah. Just, like inches away, perfectly executed. Oh, to be honest, I think if a goalkeeper does that, it's just it's a goal. Yeah. Casper yeah, Michael's got the best uh, profile picture on Twitter as well. It's him as an eight-year-old uh, holding his dad's hand both drafting keepers kids with Schmeichel one on the back of both shirts oh, <laughs> it's an amazing man, photo super. Yeah. Um, uh, I just remember the Jamie Redknapp quote about <laughs> Casper Schmeichel he went oh well you know Peter Schmeichel will literally be a father figure for him <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, brilliantly he's got that one right yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. the only time on, Jamie. a stops clock is right <laughs> twice a day mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's um, occasionally finds a nut. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> um, a, a couple of years though, um, before uh, Manchester City had finished playing for his country and amassed 129 uh, appearances for Denmark, making him their most capped player and without a doubt one of their greatest. And in 2001, as, as uh, you alluded to earlier, Luke, he won a public poll held by uh, Reuters where the majority of the 200,000 participants voted him best goalkeeper ever ahead of Lev Yashin. Yeah, I mean, there's a certain amount of uh, skewing of that given that people, of lots of people have seen Schmacher, but it's still yeah. a great achievement. Mm. Um, but, uh, you know, a magnificent goalkeeper in any era and uh, one of the best players to ever played in the Premier League too. So God, come yeah. in, Peter Schmeichel, to the Dean Windass uh, Hall of Fame. Three. About Three time. <laughs> Don't forget, um, this, this, this week, um, the Dean Windass Hall of Fame is currently in association with kitbag.com. It's got its own little sponsor and everything. Bless it. Um, <laughs> be sure to check out our Twitter feed, uh, twitter.com forward slash football ramble for a exclusive kitbag competition to win a £50 voucher towards a football shirt of your choice. There's loads on there as well. So, Hot um, yeah. damn, I feel like a woman. <laughs> and a football shirt. Kitbag.com. <laughs>